And that is where skills can be developed. Otherwise, you just develop a kind of uh, blindness for something that could occur just because you think you know. And I think it's more helpful to know that you don't know uh, because it keeps your mind open for yourself and for others. That is fantastically put. You know, it's more useful to know that you don't know than to think you know. Wow, Mm. I like that. Mm. I think I'll borrow that one too. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay. The most beautiful things come from multilingual people because you throw these ideas together in in such nice ways, unexpected ways sometimes. You speak French, Polish, English, and German, yes? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's my working languages. Yeah. Nice. Nice. That was just <laughs> so nice. That was so nice. I will definitely borrow that one with quotation and a name. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well then, the publishing of today's episode is a week late with good reason. I do apologize for that. It does, however, promise a particularly rich conversation that captures the essence of insight shared between friends, dare I say, all in keeping with the free, authentic spirit of independent podcasting. This episode of the English Coach Podcast, like all the rest, takes my usual relaxed, accessible, human approach to your learning experience. And, and sometimes um, we have to be patient because p- things are happening in visible ways. And I think in Germany, we're used to a very factual approach. You know, we do protocols and we write down summaries and so on. And we explain things with sometimes very explicit, but we think, say things just once. And in other situations, I will have to understand it. Just I will just have hypotheses, hypotheses. What do you say? Yeah, assumptions about Uh, what the reason could have been. For example, maybe in the meeting, people won't answer to me because if there's a senior person, they say they are youth or from their culture, they will not voice their concern or their questions if the senior person doesn't speak. So the boss speaks could be a kind of unwritten Uh rule and I have to find out and make assumptions it could be that way uh, that it's not as equal as we are in our company for example where the members of the team are equal experts let's say and they can really influence the decisions of their, their, their team leader and I have to assume that it works a different way that sometimes we have really to read between the lines I think the Japanese say to read the air that in, in Japanese school or in the youth socialization, you, you, you learn to read the air. So you learn to know and to be aware that there are things that are invisible mm-hmm. and that shape reality. So a silence mm-hmm. will be something different. Um, it would be something very awkward maybe between two people who come from a more, let's say, extrovert culture, maybe American culture, you know, where you don't, it's not possible to share the silence. And one of the, I was told that the, one of the beautiful things in Japanese, in, in friendship in Japan is when you, you can, you are able to share the silence. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. It's not the easy. I can do that with my cat. I do that with my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Great. <laughs> And of course you will have, of course you will have people who love silence and who speak with their, or or share the silence with their cat in in, in other contexts. Well, you know, it's funny because again, in the last episode, I think it was, it was a, the, the, the first episode where I actually trusted myself totally to just speak freely, freestyle German and publish it. I really don't mm-hmm. care. The only perfection I promise is in my own language. Yes. If someone wants perfection, <laughs> they can book a course. But, <laughs> but um, I did that in the last episode and mm-hmm. we were talking about exactly this communication thing as a, where does it end? Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. think of the meeting. A meeting has a specific goal. And the question is, from the many instances you mentioned there, could it be that communication, effective communication, is best measured by the feedback you get from your listener? Herzlich willkommen zum English Coach Podcast, präsentiert von TrainingTree.de, die personalisierte Lösung im Bereich Erwachsenenbildung. Und jetzt dein Gastgeber, Ian Antonio Patterson. 
Season 3 starts today, and I will spare you the fanfare. Nothing special about this day. I've always done it this way. It is what it is, and there really is nothing new under the sun. Everything already said, everything already read, and anybody can blow a horn. But to the contrary, today is actually a one-in-a-lifetime event. It's the third season of the English Coach Podcast, and this show is just getting over celebrating its second Sweet 16. We've just discovered that there might be life on Venus, and the sun is exploding in new and interesting ways. Sibyl von Spitzen and Flavio, Flavio Pragmatico, my two favorite helpers on the show, have finally met and this episode 33 rings in the countdown to October 1st, where I intend to re-release my new and improved learning spaces. There will be more than ever before, so check it out for yourself if you want to be sure. Okay, so that was a proper introduction, I think. However, we'll all be called to adapt, to keep pace these days. And business as usual is becoming more and more an oxymoron. And for the purpose of this episode 33, we look at what I like to call cultural fluidity. We converse with the rather daring idea of accepting the different personalities, so to speak, that constitute the whole person in all of us, and about recognizing all of them individually perhaps, as its own unique asset. So what's in it for you? Today we look at myths surrounding using a shared language and examples of where in real life things can in fact go wrong as a result of larger cultural differences. We explore specific instances of using something that is usually seen as an uncomfortable challenge Instead, as an opportunity to improve, an opportunity to not only inform, but also to communicate and to get what you want. We agree that awareness of these factors could in fact go along to reduce the stresses of remote work. Notions of perfection sometimes haunt the adult learner of a foreign language. And who knows it better than who lives it? Today we get down to the meat of it. And you might even be able to infer for yourself the extent to which certain preferred measures of perfection may be nothing more than purely pretentious or at best, in real life, non-existent. Today it's all about opinions, to be clear. None of us is speaking for any interests or organizations unknown. Ever mindful we are of our own rights, understood to shape our own contexts, and to hypothesize subjectively, with questions rather than answers, in a non-judgmental and non-moralizing way. And naturally, of course, the right to simply change our minds. This has always been my personal preferred approach to things, because everyone, I suspect, has, for whatever values they choose to uphold, their own good reasons. Today we talk about natural biases, power distance, Persian rugs, and flying chairs. 